This episode of Sun Tzu's Art of War is supported by the Great Courses Plus. It deals with Chapter 4, titled Tactical Dispositions. Chapter 4 deals with timing, preparations and the elements of war. Note that this chapter is rather abstract and seems a bit confusing at times. It starts off with the skillful warrior in ancient times first made themselves invincible and then awaited the enemy's moment of vulnerability. This is based on the view that someone who is skilled in war can make himself invincible. Yet that he cannot make the enemy vulnerable, thus the enemy has to make himself vulnerable. I originally misunderstood this part, because I thought with deception you can't trick the enemy in a vulnerable position, until I realized that is actually about patience and timing. Additionally, Sun Tzu notes, it follows that those skilled in war can make themselves invincible but cannot cause an enemy to be certainly vulnerable. I think it's important here to note that it's certainly vulnerable. In other translations it is, cannot make certain of defeating the enemy. I assume such a vulnerability is based on a fundamental error or change by the enemy, whereas a deception might only lead to a temporary vulnerability, and thus not considered to produce a result that is assured. After all, Sun Tzu mentions deception on the battlefield in chapter 5, but doesn't relate it to vulnerability. Another important aspect that is mentioned is to make no errors. For he wins his victories without erring. Without erring, he establishes the certainty of his victory. He conquers an enemy already defeated. Although I think my first interpretation of make no errors is actually not correct here. Assumingly, it is more along the lines of make careful preparations in order to overcome the enemy. As noted in the previous chapters, estimates and planning are the key elements in strategy. This interpretation is also underlined by the following statement. Thus a victorious army always seeks battle after his plans indicate that victory is possible under them, whereas an army destined to defeat fights in the hope of winning but without any planning. This also brings us to the next part. Preparation, planning and calculations are part of nearly every chapter so far. In this chapter Sun Tzu closes with a note on the elements of the art of war, which are called military method in other translations. Now the elements of the art of war are first the measurement of space, second the estimation of quantities, third calculations, fourth comparisons and fifth chances of victory. This structured approach is expanded with quantitatives derived from measurements, figures from quantities, comparisons from figures and victory from comparisons. So in short, Sun Tzu provides the basic factors and simple recipes or algorithm on how to calculate if a victory is possible. Now let's revisit chapter 4 and see how it holds up and what modern examples we can add here. This chapter seems simple at times, yet I think that if you look at the grand strategic or state level, many aspects make far more sense. For instance, the notion that one should only attack if one is certain to win, you might argue, well, isn't that a bit obvious? Yet General Mattis, the current US Defense Secretary, stated in an interview that one problem of the US in the 20th century was that politicians often went into wars without a clearly defined political objective. As an example, he mentions Korea and the Vietnam War. In other words, there was no clear plan, which violates a victorious army always seeks battle after the commander's plan indicates that victory is possible under them. The part about careful preparations is still very valid and probably best summed up with General Eisenhower's quote, In preparing for battle I have always found that plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. A more recent example is the planning, preparations and exercise performed by General Mattis before the invasion of Iraq 2003. In the so-called LEGO drill more than 6000 LEGO bricks were used, where each brick represented a vehicle of the division. These drills were finally performed on large-scale terrain models, with unit representatives wearing numbered jerseys according to the unit. This allowed for a rehearsal of the operational plan, increased situational awareness, a better understanding of terrain and other units involved in a more physical and direct form than just a map with several counters on it. Let's look at the elements of art of war or military method, depending on the translation. These are measurements of space, estimation of quantities, calculations, comparisons and chances of victory. Now how valid is this in modern times? Well, I would say still very valid, to quote from an article on military planning. In the US Army, paragraph 1 of the operational plan operation orders is the situation. This paragraph details the impact of terrain, weather and enemy forces on the operation to be conducted. 
which covers the first three points. Additionally, this one covers the later ones and more. Probable enemy course of action identified from the latest reliable human, imaginary and electronic intelligence available, as are enemy vulnerabilities and strengths. Upon completion of the intelligence estimate, the intelligence officer is prepared to comment on the feasibility of the friendly courses of action developed by the other staff officers in the light of information about the enemy. In summary, the lessons of this chapter are still viable. Although at first some points seem obvious, for instance when to attack, yet they seem less obvious if we take a look at history. Additionally, other aspects like planning are still followed widely in modern professionalized armies and show how valid the principles of this chapter still are. Now a little word from our sponsor, The Great Courses Plus. If you are interested in strategy and strategic thinkers, you probably like the video series Masters of War, History's Greatest Strategic Thinkers by Andrew R. Wilson. Since he covers Sun Tzu, Clausewitz, Machiavelli, Counterinsurgency and many more topics. All around strategy. In total 24 episodes. This is quite impressive by itself, but he's also a professor of strategy and policy at the United States Naval War College. His series is one of many of the great courses plus, which cover a wide range of topics from educators including Ivy League professors and other highly regarded institutions. Click on the link in the description below or just type in www dot the great courses plus dot com slash mhv as also shown on the screen and get access to a library of different video lectures about history science philosophy and many other topics note that there are alone 73 history courses each with 20 plus lectures each new subjects lectures and professors are added every month with the Great Courses Plus, you can watch as many different lectures as you want, anytime, anywhere. If that sounds great to you, start your one month free trial by going to the URL shown on the screen or links in the description. This will allow you to watch all video courses and by doing so you will also support this channel. As always, old source in the description. If you like this video, you might want to take a look at the previous videos on Sun Tzu, or maybe a closer look at General Mattis' Way of War. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you next time.